Passion is predicated on following your own meaning. I don't power lift for records or national level titles. I don't compete to beat the person next to me. I compete for something more real. For me, powerlifting is a physical expression of my dedication, my discipline, and above all else, my passion for this art that I love. I won't be the strongest man in the world. I may never set any world records, but when I'm up there, everyone will feel it. They'll feel what real passion is, because passion, you can't fake that shit. I don't live for standards written into a book. I lift because I love it. This was by far the hardest meat prep I've ever done, but simultaneously the most fun meat prep I've ever had, guys. And I had such an amazing meat day, uh, probably my best meat to date. And we're going to take you through an entire analysis of the whole meat day. I hope the intro was hype for you guys, but as always, I want to bring some information to the channel. So we'll start off with the weight cut. This was the morning of weigh-ins. I had a few pounds left to go, so I was weighing about 201.4 pounds here. And so I threw on my sauna suit and got into the sauna to get the last few pounds off. Many of you know I cut down from the 100 kilo or 220 pound weight class down to the 198 pound weight class or 90 kilos. And I weighed in about five days out from the meat at 211 pounds. I was a little heavier than I wanted to be. So I used a water manipulation protocol, which I'll be doing an entire separate video on, as well as a gut cut protocol. And then to get the last few pounds off, I had to go in this hot ass sauna around 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And I cooked off the last bit of sweat out of my body. It was actually extremely hard. It was probably one of the hardest things I've done in a very long time. The first round wasn't too bad. You're gonna see I got out of here after 10 minutes, I'd lost over a pound or so in body weight and I was like cocky. I was like, okay, this is easy. We can do this. I went back in for a couple more rounds and only came out after 20 minutes losing about half a pound and I was stressing. I did not think the weight was gonna come off but I toughed it out. I went in there and cooked the shit out of myself. This was actually the night before in a hot bath doing what I call a soft cut but my bathtub just could not get hot enough and normally I would actually use a hot tub for the weight cutting protocol but the problem is is we didn't have access to a hot tub because our apartment one was closed. So I had to use a sauna which is actually a lot more rigorous on the body. I'll be talking about that in future videos but this was post sauna you can see i look like someone hit me with a fucking nuke i was absolutely destroyed delirious disassociated it was definitely one of the hardest things i've done i lost about 14 pounds in total weighed in at 89.7 kilos and then I started refeeding like a motherfucker. I mean, I ate so much food. This isn't even half of it. I'm gonna show you guys some of the food. I'll be doing an entire video on how I went about the refeed and all that stuff, but I just kept eating all day long. And I got up to about 212 pounds the next morning, and then I kept eating more and more. By the time I was on the platform, I was weighing about 220. And by the time I was done with the meat, I was weighing about 225 pounds. So this was definitely one of the hardest weight cuts I've ever done or the hardest 
Uh, and I have some plans to make it a little bit easier in the future, but start of the meet day was fucking lit. Our gym is small and we hosted the meet at our gym. So we did a USPA meet here and we had 60 lifters on one platform. So this was a long fucking day, very grueling meet. The thing about USPA meets is they usually go way slower than USAPL. So it is so hard to squat at like nine in the morning and then do your deadlifts at like 4 p.m. at night. Uh, or, or in the late afternoon, whatever you want to consider that. We'll start off with Kristen's squats here. She did her last warm up there at 235 pounds. And Kristen had probably one of the better meets of her life too. I mean, she really kicked ass. Um, what, there's one exception on her squat, which we'll talk about, but we were still really excited about it. So opener here, attempt number one, 248 pounds. Kristen likes really small jumps on squats. It makes her feel a lot more confident and comfortable taking smaller jumps rather than bigger ones. So we bumped up real easy. You can see 248 absolutely flew. She sank the fuck out of it. We got white lights here and then, oh, I guess one red. Oh, also check this out. I got in trouble for cussing and yelling because <laughs> I was so high about her lifts that I was like cussing and I didn't realize it, which, which honestly you shouldn't do at meets. Like I know that seems kind of bitchy, but there's a lot of kids in the attendance uh, or in the uh, uh, audience sometimes. So it's important you kind of watch your mouth and I wasn't. But anyway, attempt number two here, 259 pounds. This here was a meat PR. So we were just happy to secure this on second. Uh, flew up super easy, nice and deep. Um, they were being strict as hell on, on depth though. You can see she kept getting a red there and you'll see mine later. I was sinking mine and they were giving me a red here and there too. So they were being really strict at this meet. Now this was not only a lifetime PR squat, but this would have been a huge meet PR as well. Now watch what happens here. She gets this weight, but she, she got a little cocky here. So she sinks it, boom, comes up grinding, 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 head shake. She got so cocky, she forgot to bring her hips through and lost her balance forward. So technically doesn't count as a meat PR and we wouldn't count it as one, but it was still badass to watch her grind that out. And as I said in the beginning, we don't write down all of our numbers in a book. That's not why we lift. So for Kristen, she killed it onto my squats here. So last warm up was 517 pounds. My goal of the day was not to squat big, especially with the grueling weight cut. I knew my strength on pressing exercise wouldn't be as high. Although squats admittedly went better than I thought they were going to go because man, that weight cut felt gnarly. Like I did not feel good. Even after I was done refeeding and getting my weight up, I still felt pretty out of it, but opened up with 556 here on the bar, uh, 252 and a half kilos. Absolutely smoked this, buried it really strong, felt super good overall. But the after taking this, honestly, I thought I was good for about maybe 622. But I just decided to stick to the plan and save energy for deadlifts because that was really my goal of the day. My number one goal was to get a 500 Wilkes, which I was just shy of. We'll talk about that later. There's attempt two, 578 pounds or 262 and a half kilos. Um, and so to get the, the 500 Wilkes, I basically set up my squat and bench to be as low as possible while still achieving that. And all I needed to lock in on this third squat was a 595 uh, squad and it felt actually really easy, really good, especially given the water cut that I did. Not only did I cut water and cut gut um, content out, I had to like sauna so hard as you guys saw, and yet this thing still flew the fuck up. So I was good for you know low 600s, probably like 622 or something if I wanted to grind it out. But no point. Uh, I went over to this judge because this man was just red lighting everyone all day. He was being strict, so I was kind of giving him a little shit there at the end. But I was saying that I was appreciating his honesty. And uh, Umar here hit PRs on everything. So Umar had what we call a super meet. He had 27 for 27 white lights. So he didn't get a single red light. His execution was flawless. He hit lifetime PRs on every single lift. And on top of that, um, I just feel like his execution that meet was not just perfect, but so much better than his previous meet experiences where he wasn't trusting me as much on some of the calls I wanted to make. Uh, Andrew, kind of same thing here. Wasn't quite a super PR or excuse me, a super meet. What, what defines a super meet is usually 27 for 27 white lights, as well as lifetime PRs on everything. At least that's my definition of it. Andrew was very close to that. Um, the one thing that kind of slowed us down here is he got the damn squat bar. So in our first three flights, I was able to convince them to let us use an Ohio power bar, which is far superior for squatting. Look at the whip of that bar. So Andrew, he had to use the squat bar and especially being a high bar squatter, 
It is so, that's what he was talking about there. He's like, it whips like a bitch. Still a 10 kilo meat PR for him. So huge performance. Uh, Chris and then went on to bench, smoked 154, which was so easy, but they were giving her shit about her butt, even though we felt like it was down. So she had to use very little leg drive on this third attempt and just didn't have enough uh, strength without those legs added in. Guys, they're being strict. I know a lot of people think USAPL is stricter than USPA. I honestly disagree. I see way more sketchy calls in the USAPL than I do in the USPA, at least when it's higher level uh, feder- or excuse me, higher level refs on the platform. They were being really, really strict. You'll see even my third bench, they gave me a pretty damn long pause. These first two attempts were good. So again, um, right here, 364 flies up, say fair pause. Everything felt pretty good here. 375 secured what I needed for the 500 Wilkes. So I was really happy with that on the second attempt. And then on the third attempt here, they gave me a pretty damn long pause, but that's okay. You know, shit happens in meets. I missed this one. It was very close. This would have just been extra icing on the cake anyway, since I secured what I needed for the 500 Wilkes. And I wasn't really arching at all. I actually wasn't even unracking with my butt up in the air. I hardly arched because I wanted to save my back. And that's the key with USPA meets especially. Especially, you're usually in the gym or, or competing for like seven, eight hours straight. And in order to keep your body fresh, you got to do certain things that you might not have to do in a much faster paced meet. Uh, the USAPL, some of their meets will get done in like three, four hours. So they're like twice as long and very, very grueling. And you got to really stay hydrated. That's why we were drinking salt in uh, freaking soy sauce earlier. Okay, Kristen's deadlifts probably the most impressive thing at the meet all day out of everyone there she smoked 358 and so i made her go for what i knew was not just a lifetime pr but just overall like a fucking badass deadlift 385 here smokes it a little bit of grind at the top had she made weight she would have broke a record that was standing for since 2014 we just don't care to do that <laughs> she could have easily but for us like i said in the beginning like records mean very little to us but still pretty badass that she uh is is just so damn strong at the deadlift i think she's gonna pull 400 here someday soon now my deadlifts uh last warm up here 628 pounds felt really really good like i i felt strong and then look at this six 55 fucking flew up i could have repped that for like eight to ten reps i mean i felt so strong but then my kryptonite came back watch my left hand here as i pull up so you're gonna see my hand just starts to open up and that's the only reason 705 kind of slowed down i knew my back was good for 755 which was my goal for the day uh, but I decided to be smart. I called for 722, which is a meat PR, and I gripped wider and deeper in the palm so I could hold on, and my hand actually ripped the fuck open really badly, but nonetheless, absolutely fucking hyped out of my mind. This weight cut was so gnarly, and my CNS was just fried at this point. I was in the gym all day, and to be able to just pull that off without my grip giving out and locking it in and having to change my technique last minute was huge for me. Uh, Umar there with his final pull, also a, I think that was like a 30 pound lifetime PR, and it still flew up. I mean, the guy's just gaining strength like crazy and then Andrew finished off with 716 also a lifetime PR um, just an amazing day overall we had so much fun I'm going to be doing a video about uh, what I want to work on for future meets really my main goal moving forward is going to be the deadlift I really want an 800 pound deadlift at 198 so that's going to be what I specialize in for the next year I'm also going to be getting into some movement variability with a new program we're actually going to be releasing at prime uh, in our group coaching programs I'll be running that finish the day off with some hugs some medals from our gym owner there aaron aaron is amazing by the way he made this whole day possible and he's such an awesome fucking gym owner i really love this guy uh and i was just so happy he let us do this at the gym it was it was by far the most fun meet i've ever done but like hands down most fun hype meet i've ever been to the osi guys old school iron they were great at hosting and it was a good fucking day and uh walked out of there with some medals we were kind of joking because none of us actually care about uh the medals really and so we told everyone to wear them in the picture and then fucking flex off for the cameras and that was it guys i'll catch y'all in the future videos